What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today I'm gonna to give you some really useful tips to help you dial in your espresso further using just the information about your coffee. This is gonna really help you reduce your waste and improve your taste. So less wasty, more tasty. Get excited, cause we're about to hop in. Okay, so we all know that there are different variables of extraction. So different variables that we can control in order to manipulate extractive properties. So that means grind size. Obviously, if you have a finer grind size, you're opening up more surface area, you have a higher potential extraction. If you have a coarser grind size, you have less surface area open, you have lesser extraction potential. Now you may be thinking to yourself, how does that make sense? There's more surface area on a big ground than a small. I'm talking in terms of the bean itself. If you took a bean, you cut it in half, boom. We have surface area that's not quite been doubled, but you have just the half, the inside that's exposed and the original outside. If you cut it again, you have more inside exposed. The more you cut it, the more it's exposed. Bada bing, bada boom, you're giving the goodies out uh, to trick-or-treaters for extraction. I don't know what that means, but it's now said and I can't take it back. Okay, so you have grind size, you have extraction yield or ratio. So essentially how much espresso you're pulling. So how much water are you running through your puck? This is the number one contributor to extraction in the sense that if you just pull five more grams, 10 more grams of a coffee, you're gonna really affect that extraction yield as opposed to if you changed a degree or two on your temperature, which leads to the next. Temperature is a factor of extraction. So higher temperature, higher potential extraction, lower temperature, lower potential extraction. So you can uh, typically have a, a range of 90 to 96 Celsius on an espresso machine or around 195 to 205 on a, 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 in Fahrenheit. Now the higher you go, the more you're gonna be able to pull out of a coffee, the lower the less. So. Uh, and then the, the last thing we'll talk about is uh, essentially pressure or flow. They're intertwined. Uh, flow rate times resistance equals pressure. And this affects your extraction as well. So these are th kind of the main variables of extraction. There are definitely more. You could bring in pup prep. You could bring in tamp pressure. You could bring in all these different variables. But these are the ones we're going to focus on because they're the ones most people can actually change at home. We'll actually kind of push out pressure and flow rate because a lot of people can't mess with that. But just know if you have the capability of messing with flow rate or pressure, then you can also open up to that. Anyway, with the knowledge of these variables, with how to push extraction more or less, we're gonna be able to know where we need to go when we grab a new bag of beans. So you just got in a new bag of beans and you're like, all right, how do I change where I was to this new coffee without wasting 150 grams, right? Doing espresso at home is difficult because you always have to dial in and it wastes a lot of coffee. So how can we take a new bag of coffee look at it and know where we should move the dial to waste as little as possible. There are three tidbits of information that once you understand how to use them, you'll be able to zone in on that perfect espresso, that God shot that you love at home. Now these can be found on most coffee bags and sometimes it's just something you kind of know. And the three variables are the variety, so the variety of the coffee, whether it's Katura or Katwai or Gesha or Sidra or um, Margo Hipe, whatever it might be, having an understanding of what the variety is in a bag like this, it has it right here, Margo Hipe, we know what the variety is. So that's gonna help us dial in. I'll explain it in a second. The next thing would be to understand what process the coffee went under. So processing, if you don't know, is essentially the process of how we get the seed out of the cherry, the coffee seed out of the coffee cherry. And there are a lot of different ways, especially in recent years, a lot of different ways on how to do this. But the original three, the OGs, are washed, honey, and natural. And just really briefly, wash is literally you're pulping the coffee, so you're taking the seed outside of its flesh, and then you're washing it. And then with honey, you're pulping it, so you're taking the seed out of the, the, the cherry, but there's a mucilage layer covering it. You let that ferment naturally, rot naturally in the sun. And natural is you're taking the cherries and you're tossing them on a uh, maybe a dry raised bed or if you're, you're or some uh, pavement outside, you're letting it dry, rot naturally. So those are kind of the three originals, but since then there have been a lot of permutations, a lot of um, uh, small variations of different types of processing. And you may have heard of some of them like, anaerobic processing, lactic acid processing, acetic processing, 
carbonic maceration or a, a plethora of other ones that are now being practiced at farms around the world. And the more places that are growing coffee, the more people that are getting into agronomy, agriculture, and different things uh, relating to the processing or the, the life of a coffee cherry itself, the more processes we're getting. And these directly affect their extractions. And the last thing that we're going to take into account, and this is something else that you'll just learn over time, is roasting style or roast level. So the, the terms people most often use are light and dark. Those aren't super helpful, but we're going to kind of rely on them for right now so we don't have to go off on another tangent. But essentially, the roast degree of a coffee will greatly inform you as to how you should make changes to make your espresso even tastier. So let's go ahead and talk about how these affect your final extraction. The first thing we talked about was variety. So we have Margo, Margo Hipe here, and we have just heirloom varietal here with, a, with uh, Ethiopia. Heirloom just means there's so many varieties in here, they just kind of use it as a catch-all term. So heirloom tends to be very, very dense and really difficult to extract. So right off the bat, we know we have to push extraction quite a bit with this. So that means we're gonna use the variables of extraction we know we need to go maybe finer, on the grind size. Maybe we need to do more yield, so a bigger ratio. Maybe we need to increase the temperature. Maybe you have it set at 93. We need to go up to 96, right? So we have the, these, these ideas that we can now put together. We know the variety. We know it's a difficult to extract variety, and we're going to increase our variables of extraction. Well, let's say that we've now dialed, dialed this in, and we've gone through the whole bag, and we found the perfect sweet spot. Delicious. But now we, the next bag we bought is a Margo Jipe. So we're like, oh my God, all right, so what should we do? Well, we're, we can look at the variety as the first thing. The variety is Margo Hipe. It is much less dense than something like Heirloom. It's much bigger and the structure is just more spread out. So it's gonna be much more soluble. So when we're thinking about it, if we were doing, let's say a, a one to four ratio with our Ethiopia, we can maybe just drop down to a one to three or a one to two and a half or we can lower the temperature, or we can coarsen the grind size, or whatever it might be in order to change up what's going on in our cup. So that's one of the ways we can kind of do it, all right, is based off of variety. But we need to do it in concert with these other two tidbits. The next would be processing. So when we're looking at, say, this, this bag right here in this bag, we have from Coffee Collective a washed coffee, all right? And then this one from Combi, we have a natural. Now, whenever you do more and more processing to a coffee, it becomes more and more soluble, roughly. Now, I'm speaking in generalizations here, so don't take what I'm saying as the God honest truth, but what I can tell you is in practice, the solubility tends to increase with the more kind of funky fermentations that go on. So the longer you're letting something ferment and rot, the more soluble it tends to get. So something like a washed coffee is gonna have a much harder time to be extracted than something, the same coffee that's been produced uh, with an, an uh, that's been processed like anaerobically. So if you had the same exact coffee, one's washed, one's anaerobic, anaerobic's gonna be much easier to extract. And so maybe between the two, you have them pulling at different ratios, different grind sizes, whatever it might be. But processing is something you need to take into account. The more insane the process tends to be, the more easy it is to extract. With coffees that are alternatively processed, you're gonna have a much easier time extracting them. So you need to be careful of not going too far and getting some of that drying effect that you might not like. If you push it too hard, you're gonna get a shot that might be a little over extracted to your preferences. We won't get into what over and under extracted really means right now, but just know if you're pushing it too much, pushing it like you would a washed coffee or a washed counterpart, you might not be getting the espresso you love and it might be because of the processing. And then of course the final one is roast degree. Now in the roasting process, you're essentially just heating up the coffee bean with a direct flame or with infrared or whatever it might be. You're heating it up more and more and more and the cell structure is expanding, the coffee bean is expanding, it's getting lighter in weight, it's losing, uh, it's losing its mass. And so it gets more and more soluble the darker and the darker and the darker that you take it. So when you have a really lightly roasted coffee that's washed and is, let's say, an heirloom, a really dense variety, we know that's going to be really, really difficult to extract. So we'll take a coffee like this, which is a Brazilian coffee. It's grown at a lot lower altitude. Sometimes you can take altitude into account because typically higher altitudes have a higher density depending on variety, but, and, and this variety has a much lower density. So, but, and, and it's a natural process and it's roasted more darkly. So we have uh, essentially the exact opposite coffee right here. And so if, when we're dialing these side by side, they're gonna have completely different recipes. So if you get these coffees in, 
which people love a, a, a large difference, a large variety of coffees. So let's say someone had this in and they get this in. Instead of starting at the same point you ended, you immediately know you're gonna have to try a lot less hard to extract this properly. So we're gonna lessen the ratio, lessen the temperature, do all these things in order to find our starting point. And then based off of taste, we can kind of maneuver it. And of course I have a two part series on dialing in espresso already, which I'll link here. And then in a few seconds, I'll link the second one. But uh, th it kind of just talks on how to use your taste in order to find your sweet spot. But before even getting to taste, you can make changes based off of your knowledge of the coffee relative to the one you had just dialed in. And th th again, those three things are variety, process, and roast level. Then we're just gonna change the extraction using our variables of extraction. Now, some of you may be asking, why don't you bring up contact time? I think contact time is a, it's obviously a variable and more contact time is gonna give you more potential, less contact, less potential. But in reality, when you're ta ta talking in terms of ratio and the yield, that is going to also affect time. So you can't really change time without changing the ratio or yield, right? So it, it gets it gets a little convoluted. And also I think people get a little too dogmatic about time. Uh, you need to learn to break these rules. 60 seconds, 70 seconds, 80 second shots even can taste delicious. So you just have to be able to give a lot of these different things uh, a try. But so for those variables, we're mostly talking about grind size, we're talking about flow or pressure since they're intrinsically related, we're talking about ratio and we're talking about the temperature. So again, contact time is one of those, but it's kind of related to your dose and your ratio. So anyway, these are the these are some guidelines, some tips for you to be able to figure out your way when you get a new bag of coffee. It's gonna really help you, I do believe, and it's gonna help you kind of really start to look at your coffee as opposed to just going, oh yeah, someone else got this coffee, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. You're gonna start studying the bag, seeing what altitude it's at, seeing what the process is. Maybe you'll start, you know, remembering who the producers are, which is gonna just spread the love of specialty around. And it might even force some companies to put more information on their bags, which I think can be really helpful, especially for the sake of the producer. So. Thank you so much for watching today. I really hope these tips and tricks and hints and hacks and all the dilly wax help you dial in your delicious coffee with less waste because that's what we want. Less wasty, more tasty. All right, good, good. I hope you brew something tasty today. And cheers.